Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, I'm going to finally take you through the MySQL database. I'm going to teach you the very basics, what you need to know for the RHCSA, the Red Hat Certified System Administration exam. It's really just very simple. It's basically installing MySQL, doing a first setup and configuration of MySQL, and then um, talking a little bit about what options you might want to change and how to make that play nice with SE Linux. For those of you that don't know, MySQL is a relational database that just about every sysadmin will bump into sooner or later and have to touch in some uncomfortable way sooner or later. Hopefully not in the context of it's lost my data or it's corrupted something or replication has been horribly screwed up again. Um, MySQL is incredibly fast for many very popular workloads and that's made it basically ubiquitous, uh, certainly in the web hosting world. I'm sure we've all heard stories of how Facebook uses it all over the place, so it must be great. And uh, certainly in web hosting, you know, if you've ever heard of a LAMP stack, Linux, Apache, MySQL, there it is, and PHP, for the last you know 20 years, it's been the most popular database to be paired with just about every web hosting kind of application. It's very good and very fast at certain workloads. Occasionally, turns out, MySQL hasn't been so great with the number one thing a database should do, which is safely keep your data without losing or corrupting it. Um, some of the default options, especially for some of the default in the past storage engines uh, that MySQL uses, have turned out not to be so safe for data. And as a result, a lot of people have uh, gotten frustrated, moved to things like Postgres. Um, but MySQL is still super strong and you will run into it just about everywhere, really. We're going to talk about the fork of MySQL, which Red Hat likes to use for their exams. It's called MariaDB, and that's basically when Oracle uh, acquired MySQL. A community fork happened uh, because of how Oracle tends to murder everything it touches, um, most recently Solaris. This MariaDB community fork uh, is basically what uh, Red Hat prefers. We're going to go ahead and use that. But basically, in your mind, MariaDB is essentially interchangeable with MySQL. Only later on do they kind of like diverge. So for the basics, they are essentially the same thing. The package is just named something different. All the commands and stuff are the same. Okay, so let's go ahead and install MariaDB. That is MySQL. And the package is MariaDB-Server. We're installing the actual server version and not just the client libraries that we would need to actually log into a database remotely, stuff like that. So that's going to go and fetch our package and install it. And if you're familiar at all with uh, System D and service management under System D, you know that now we run System CTL. Uh, actually, let's see if it was started. MariaDB is the name of the unit. It hasn't been started, so we can go ahead and start it and enable it if you want. Go ahead and start that. Uh, so the first start is a little bit slow. So now that MariaDB or MySQL is started, uh, we can check the status again. If you wanted to enable it, that is for it to start at boot, which you definitely would want to do on a server, then you would type in systemctl enable MariaDB. But that should be just part of your your system D service management reflexes by now. So if we run status again, we can see that it's active running. We can see the tail of that log. MySQL underscore install underscore DB is a script that will actually get your MySQL database set up the first time from a blank slate. This will get the basic tables that you need uh, created. However, this was actually already run automatically when uh, I actually uh, started MariaDB for the first time. So occasionally you may have to run this if uh, you haven't started the service yet, or if the system you're on it doesn't run like a, a check for the database files existing and runs this script if they don't. So again, you may have to run this to initialize the database. I do not have to run this. Presumably CentOS 7 and above, uh, you'll be fine without running this manually. Just, you should know that this is there. This is part of the RHCSA stuff you gotta know. Another script that you definitely need to run is MySQL secure installation. This is a user bin, MySQL secure installation. It's lovely when they just litter up user bin with like a million things for a single package. It's my favorite. 
So instead of saying which in front of this, we're just going to actually run it. Because we didn't set a root password for this database, uh, you can go ahead and hit enter. When it asks you, okay, so should we now set a root password, you'll say yes. So what this is going to do is remove all the horrendous insecure defaults that MySQL ships with. Because when you ship some software, you want to make sure it's running as poorly, insecurely, and data corruptingly as possible. At least that's the sort of MySQL, the sort of theory behind everything they do. So now you're going to set a new root password. Obviously, this should be something quite secure. We're going to remove anonymous users. That is <laughs> allowing, <laughs> yeah, just remove anonymous users. You're going to want to be hitting Y just about to every single uh, option here. Do we want to disallow the root user from logging in remotely? Why, yes, we do. Absolutely. If someone wants root on this database, they're going to have to actually log into this machine before they can get to that account on the database. Uh, we definitely want to remove the test database and all access to it. And we're going to flush the privilege tables to make sure that these permissions changes actually uh, happen. So for those of you that get into MySQL more deeply, when you make any kind of like user or password changes or that kind of thing, any grants, uh, what you'll do is flush the privileges. It's just a command called flush privileges, which will kind of make those changes live on the running database. Okay, so this is a very important step. Again, MySQL underscore secure underscore installation. That is the script. If you install the MySQL server, regardless of which uh, distribution you're on, this should uh, get added someplace that's on your path. So you should be able to run it. Okay, so now we actually have a mostly secure running database server. It'd be great if this was just part of the default installation, but it's just the world we live in right now uh, means that when you install MySQL, you got to do all this cleanup before you can actually feel safe about it. Because we're not using MySQL, we're using the MariaDB fork. Logs are in var log MariaDB, and the main one is in MariaDB.log. So this is your main log file in case um, you've got like issues with people trying to log in, with grants not being right, with um, any kind of actual MySQL issues. This is probably the first place you want to look when you're actually troubleshooting the MySQL service. Your unit file is in lib systemd system, which is sort of the primary location for um, systemd unit files. It's called mariadb.service. And if we check it, this is exactly the sort of thing we expect in a unit file. If you're not familiar with systemd or the any files that it uses to define resources that it manages, this is what those look like. Uh, and so, for example, if you needed to uh, change how MySQL starts, for example, passing a different option, doing some other action after it starts, uh, a timeout. This is something that you actually may have to raise. If you've got a large, you know, multi terabyte database, the way that a lot of production setups of MySQL do, then raising this timeout uh, is a good idea, potentially, because what can happen is that starting the database will take long enough that you'll hit this timeout and systemd will be like, well, something went wrong, this didn't work, even if it would have worked given just a little bit more time. So that's something you'll want to potentially want to change uh, at your discretion. Obviously, you wouldn't probably do that by editing this file directly. If you're operating at that scale, presumably you have more than one server, you may have set up replication, and these kinds of changes would be made through some kind of configuration management tool that you're using to kind of push this config out to all of your MySQL servers, not editing each snowflake individually. So that's our unit file. That's our main log file. I think it runs as MySQL. Take my chances. Yeah. So I wasn't sure if the process name was MySQL or MariaDB. I think even though it's MariaDB in the package and in some of the config file names and that kind of thing, the process itself is still MySQL, which makes it easy to manage with other MySQL tools. The default port that it runs on is 3306. That is just the MySQL port, and you can see that in Sockstat. If you wanted to edit the uh, main config file, the main config file can be found at etsy.my.conf. It's not .conf, it's .cnf. And this is your main MySQL config file. If you, for example, wanted to ensure that MySQL only runs locally through a Unix socket instead of a, a TCP socket, 
only available to local processes and not across the network. You could put that option here. You could change the where the PID file is, where your error log is if you want to split that out. And then there's this uh, include dir directive at the bottom, which just means that everything in Etsy my.cnf.d will also be read after the main config. So you can see in here, there are some, some more specific configurations that are run after the uh, after the main, that won't be interesting, but this will, after the main config file is read or parsed. And I'm gonna actually less it. Looks like this is totally empty, but. So let's actually connect to MySQL. Uh, by default, just typing in MySQL will work in this. <laughs> Not since we uh, ran the secure installation script. So on a default install, this would work because what MySQL does is it uses defaults. The default user that it uses is root and the default password it uses is empty. So what that's really saying, uh, it also uses a default host of localhost. So this is essentially the same thing that uh, the default, just typing in MySQL will do. Those are the default options it's using. So what you actually need to do is the uh, pass the dash P option for password. So this will actually prompt you for a password. You could also um, supply a password right after that P option, but that's quite insecure uh, because it shows up in your shell history. So like, <laughs> Obviously, if it's root, it's not a problem, but if you're logging in as root from somewhere else, like another user account that potentially can get popped by, then you, then you can have a non-root user that sees in some other user on this box's shell history the root password for MySQL, and that would be bad. So generally, you wanna do this uh, interactively. Obviously, in a script, you may be doing it non-interactively, which is too bad. Here we are on the MySQL shell. We have now logged in, and this works a lot like Bash or any other shell that you're used to. Um, one of the first things you might want to do is say show databases, and if I was a beautiful DBA, then I would capitalize all of this for good form and extra points on the test, but uh, no one actually cares. Like All the SQL syntax will still work lowercase. It's traditionally just shown in all uppercase. So you can see that some basic databases have been created. The information schema, the performance schema. Likewise, the MySQL database, which just contains stuff like uh, you can use a database. You can say use MySQL, for example. I always want to write DT because I'm used to Postgres. But uh, so show tables. You need to terminate your SQL statements with this uh, semicolon. I'm not going to go into like SQL here. I just want to show you like very basics of moving around. We can do a SQL video if you guys want. Um, let me know in the comments. Anyway, so this shows you the tables in the database that we are using, the database we've selected. So you can see here all kinds of sort of database configuration stuff. And just a very basic SQL query. Um, this may be interesting, usually uh, with, with like a limit, but the slow log is where slow queries are kept. So you can see like what what kind of stuff your application or your users are doing that is running really slowly. Usually those will be like big joins or something. Um, and then you can just go yell at somebody for, for doing stupid things on your production database. But that's occasionally useful for troubleshooting. So I'm just mentioning it quickly here. This is not on, I, on the RHCSA exam. I don't think it's even on the RHCE. So there you go. We are inside the MySQL shell. I've showed you how to select a database. That is how to use a database how to show tables and to quit you can type quit you can type exit or you can hit control d like any other shell i like to hit control d because i'm lazy and that brings you back to whatever shell you uh, started my sql from so because this is on the rh csa exam or at least the rhce exam if you want to run mysql on a non-standard port i'll just kind of walk you through how you would do that because potentially you may be asked that on one of these Red Hat exams. You would go to Etsy MyConf. It's not in there. And it's not there either. Okay, so this is actually just running on the default without even ever being mentioned in the config file. Another practice which I don't really like, 
Um, but okay. So whatever, I'll just vim it. It's not in there. Etsy, my conf. So you would edit the etc my.cdf file. And you would insert something like port equals. Uh, so this is the default. What I would love to see is just a commented out version of this, but to show you, hey, this is the default it's running on, and you can change it and uncomment it if you want to change it. But if you were going to run it on 33, uh, we'll just say 60 instead, you could save this. You would have to update the firewall rules to allow TCP traffic there. Add a permanent rule. Add a port. Uh, shit. What did I change that to? <laughs> 3360. 3360. Whoa. Uh, and that's a TCP port. <sighs> okay, if firewall D was running and you had turned it on, that's the command you would run. Firewall CMD, add a permanent uh, rule where you add a port 3360 or whatever your custom port is that you have in etc my.cnf. Uh, and it's a TCP port, so you got to specify that too. Then you would reload your firewall daemon with firewall CMD. Uh, I'll just type it out. Reload, and then you would have to update SE Linux with SE Manage Port because we're managing a port. MySQL D, I think, port T, and then the actual port is a TCP port at 3360. So this would now be telling SE Linux to be allowing that port for that process. Probably not even enabled. Oh, it is. Okay. Um, so you could just grep for it there. Um, let's see if a default one was added for my SQL. Boy, there sure are a lot of... So what I just typed in was se manage port dash L. Um, this is unnecessary. That was just a slip of the finger. That'll show you the, the ports that, are, that have been defined here. Um, so after that, just to confirm, uh, I think you would grep for my SQL. Nice, Dave. Yes, you would grab for MySQL. Uh, I wasn't sure if it was going to be MariaDB, but it's MySQL. So this will list all the SE Linux managed ports. And you can make sure that the one that you're running on is in here. After messing with your firewall rules and telling SE Linux to allow traffic for that process on that port, then you would simply restart uh, MariaDB. So there you go. Those are all the basics of uh, MySQL MariaDB. A few hints for things that you might want to look at or change in production. Uh, and I believe this is um, enough to pass the RHCSA um, and the practical questions that you may be asked. Specifically, what kinds of things do you then have to do um, if you, for example, change the default port with the firewall daemon and um, SE Linux enabled? I hope that's been helpful. Uh, if you want more of this stuff, make sure to uh, like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments if you want me to do an actual like SQL tutorial. I think it's useful for sysadmins to know basic SQL. And it's pretty easy. It, it's actually like, as a programming language, to, to get great at SQL, it's really hard. But to be passably okay at it, uh, certainly enough to do sysadmin-y type things, it is much easier than you might think. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.